Wang Tahara caught trash over the show. Discuss all the masterpieces and trash the pieces of genre cinema. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And it's 2022. Happy New Year. Yes. We are here today to start your 2022 with a film that was nothing like I was expecting it to be. No. <laughs> um, pleasantly surprised? Oh, pleasantly surprised, yeah. Pleasantly surprised. I mean... We are here today to start your new year with a discussion about Full Eclipse from 1993. A film that I assumed would just be a straight up trash to piece, but I don't know. I mean, some of the some of it kind of takes it past trash to piece. I mean, it's very well made with the practical effects and such. It was a lot gorier than I yeah. expected. Um the the camera work wasn't the best. The the acting's a little rough. <laughs> the acting is very rough. It's a TV movie. It's yeah. So and it feels like a TV movie, but with like added gore. It's like oh, yeah, okay, what's going on here? And it's a it's a really fun premise. Uh, one that can only be done justice the way this film has done it in the nineties. It yeah, it's it's a batshit crazy concept, really. And it's a batshit crazy film. Yeah. Good, bad, you know, it, it, it's personal preference. I'm sure there are plenty of people who fucking hate this film. Well, but it's uh, quite on brand for us, yeah. really. And we've had a good reaction since we posted it. A lot of people seem to really enjoy it. Uh, directed by Anthony Hickox, not to be confused with Anthony Hitchcock. Uh, director of Waxwork 1 and 2. Sundown, The Vampire in Retreat, Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, Warlock, The Armageddon, Prince Valiant, Stormcatcher, Jill Rips, Federal Protection, Blast, Submerged, uh, Exodus to Shanghai, and much, much more. Uh, prior to this, as far as I was aware, he only made one good film, but um, yeah, then this, this is the second best film. Waxwork is fantastic and very underrated. Um, one of my favourites. So, if you haven't seen that, go and watch it. It is really, really good. And the werewolf segment in Waxwork has, has always been one of my favourite things with a werewolf put on screen. So, I mean, I suppose I should have seen it coming that this was going to be alright. Yeah, these are werewolf cops, though. They, they are werewolf cops. These are werewolf cops. <laughs> I mean, you add cops into it and you don't know what you're going to get. I mean, we love Maniac, but with Maniac Cop, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. I mean, it was I like Maniac Cop, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Waxwork, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. it also has the best thing you'll ever see involving a mummy on screen as well. The sequel... Not so much. Not it's all right. It's, it's all right. It's just, yeah. I felt like it tried to go the Evil Dead route. I think so. It even got Bruce Campbell in it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, budget unknown, and uh, it was made for TV. Made for TV. So, uh, trivia. <laughs> We've got two pieces of trivia. Mario Van Peebles was director Anthony Hick... I nearly said Anthony Hitchcock. almost Hitchcock's. did it. Anthony Hickox's is uh, first and only jo- choice to play Max Dyer. And the film's original title was The Pack. That's all you're getting. That makes sense. <sighs> Again, into the film, the LA Police Department have a special team of officers with a talent for reducing big-time crime. The team leader has an excellent track record for crime reduction in other big cities, but his methods are unconventional, and so is he. He's a werewolf. <laughs> oh. That, honestly, that official premise is just as melodramatic as the film itself. Well, you know, it's not lying. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the best way to sum it up. Um, uh, by the way, there is an absolute queen in this film, as you will know from when we've announced this. We we may be uh, Patsy Kens at stands, and she she's in this. She's trying, bless her, a bit too much. Um, <laughs> that that reminded me of that video where she like. He's a police officer with a great track record in other countries, but <laughs> he's gay. I, I'm so sorry. He's a werewolf. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Pat this whole film. Uh, oh. Speaking of memes, this whole film gives me quick. Somebody call an ambulance, but not for me. But not for me. <laughs> that is the sort of energy this entire film gives. <laughs> 
Um, that's good. She ain't got much to do. Uh, bigger role than I was expected. Bigger role than expected. Second, I mean, she's got second, second villain. villain. Um, Fresh from Lethal Weapon 2. <laughs> bless her out. She, she, she struggles. Bless her. <laughs> uh, we love her though. We love her. We love Eighth Wonder. We love Eighth Wonder. <laughs> we, love, we love the band that she was in. <laughs> and that one <laughs> album that they did, which um, we play all the time. Love it. But as an actress, she was alright in Lethal Weapon 2 I, I don't know what happened here is it, do you own what else have we seen in oh, absolute, absolute Beginners Absolute Beginners I enjoyed her in that yeah um she was in the list <laughs> I mean, she was Emma Dale, Dale. she's great in Emma she Dale. She loved. Oh, Holby City, loved her in Holby City. And she, she had quite a long role in Emma Dale, actually. She was in Holby City for a while as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I Soap queen. enjoyed the version of Great Expectations that I was forced to watch in school that she appeared <laughs> in. <laughs> oh, also, speaking of Lethal Weapon, at first I genuinely thought we were in for an, a Lethal Weapon ripoff with uh, with werewolves. Because he even did the whole I'm too old for this shit line as well. Oh, God, of course, like, it, yeah. It genuinely starts off like a lethal weapon. Poor weapon. old Jim, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true, actually. But no, it's certainly not. No. Um, so we get opening credits with ugly green font and the moon slowly coming into view, followed by a cat meowing. Hideous. I, and that cat was angry. Well, now that we've seen the film, the, the cat, the angry cat and the guy in the wife beater vest... They would get to see through his window. Um, so pointless. <laughs> what was the idea? <laughs> yeah, so I got an older gentleman and a wife beater looking angry out of his window and then walks towards a very sad looking woman on a bed. Yeah. I'm assuming prostitute? I, 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 I'm not really. I don't. I'm assuming they're trying to convey the back streets of LA and. A rough area of town. Oh, this place is a shithole. Like you always gar- you can guarantee on the out there's always a crime somewhere. Like there's always something going on. And just graffiti everywhere. <laughs> there's graffiti everywhere. Everywhere. Um so yeah, we're introduced to uh, there's some folks on the roof uh, and the streets, they're everywhere. Um we're introduced to Max Dyer, a Los Angeles detective who is feeling the strain that his profession entails when his wife of two years, Anna, accuses him of bringing his work home a little later on. I don't know why it's so early in my notes. Um, why is that so early in your notes? Uh, it's just like a character introduction. What we get is a uh, police officer Max Drive. I misheard that as drive. Um, <laughs> yeah. I misheard his drive. It's the only time I use it in my notes. Um he offers his partner, poor old Jim. Jim Sheldon. Jim Sheldon. A greasy-ass donut. <laughs> but Jim, um, as has to explain yet again, that he's diabetic. <laughs> now, you, can, you know, that might come up later, because he does make a big deal of it. it. It is funny that, like, he's, oh, my partner, my only friend. I keep forgetting he's diabetic. Yeah. He should probably remember that. <laughs> Uh, Jim's also engaged, and what's the best part of being engaged, Gary? Um, what is the best part? I've got his vows. Regular sexual intercourse. Oh, uh, well, he reads his vows to Max, uh, and they are, because I care about you, I want to be with you. Short and That's sweet. <laughs> yeah. I said they, they just want a short ceremony. Uh, and that he, so they can get back to shagging. Well, yeah, he reveals he's both crazy and horny. Mm. Crazy he is. Uh, they're called to a very nearby incident. This happens a lot with them. <laughs> Everything happens really close by to where they are. You know, they're very fortunate. Uh, they're called to a nearby incident where someone is thrown out the window. Yeah, Club Zero. <laughs> Club Zero. We hear screams and gunshots are being fired. Uh, Max kind of takes it upon himself to go a little vigilante. Well, not Max, wait for backup. <laughs> Max is determined to be the ultimate 90s cup stereotype. Like, as soon... Every, every character is felt as a 90s stereotype in some capacity. Like, he, he turns and he's like, let's dance! As I, really, Max? Really? And then Jim's like, no, we should wait. And then a guy's thrown out the window like, okay, shit, maybe we should go in. I'm not familiar with Mario Van Peebles as an actor. I'm not sure if he's putting on a voice to sound... Um... Well, like, um, old school detective. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's his voice, but that's how he's coming across. I mean, a, a happy coincidence if that's the case, and that's just what he sounds like. 
Um, so they make their way to the roof. Jim is very reluctant, but yeah. does follow Max into the club. He's too old for this. Too old for this shit. Inside the club, the patrons are being held hostage. They were identified why they're being held hostage. No, no, because the Nazi bad guys. Crime just happens. Crime <laughs> just happens. And it's also clearly the nightclub from Hellraiser 3 as well. I was getting barbed wire. At the, oh my god, it does. It does. So, uh... Imagine what, if Pam Ransom was in this. Oh, they get five stars. <laughs> so, a woman yells for them to stop. So, the, the bad guy starts dancing with her. <laughs> So she's getting uncomfortable with the dancing and her, who I believe to be her boyfriend, says, uh, says stop, leave her alone or, or whatever, to the words of those effect. And I'm just wondering, what did they think was going to become of that? <laughs> like, if you're a hostage and then, you know, gunfire, mm-hmm. potentially, someone's been thrown out of a window <laughs> and you're saying, Stop! <laughs> No, oh, sorry, love. Like yeah, Britney Spears, okay. oh, Jeremy, so you drive me crazy. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, oh, yeah, sorry, love. Yeah, now you put now you put it like that. Like, what did... And he's like, leave her alone. Like, of course he's going to get shot. And he gets shot. Like, what does he think is going to happen? Yeah, I, I can't figure out this whole scenario. And honestly, at first... But it happens in so many films. It's it not even like it's just this film. <laughs> I thought I saw Patsy Kenzer in this within this opening scene. I swear I saw her in that nightclub. I, I don't know if she just accidentally wandered on set or it was just someone who really looked like her. The thing is, because you knew Patsy Kenzer was in this film, you wanted to see Patsy I Kenzer. You wanted her. her to be in every scene. The main bad guy looks like a budget Jason Patrick. Um, and a few scenes in this were giving me Lost Boys, actually. I, even though it's werewolves and not vampires, I feel like... That may have played a part in the what they were going for. The werewolves looked like, and this was four years before, but they kind of gave me Buffy the Vampire the, Slayer yeah, Vampires. which was taken from Lost Boys, the design. Oh, okay. Well, there so, we go. Of course it was. Yeah, stupid. Um, yeah, so budget Jason Patrick's there holding people hostage. Um, he shoots some speakers down. But the, the, the funny thing is, Max and Jim are in the vent at this point watching because they're cops in a 90s action film. Mm. And, you know, they shoot... Because Die Hard was made. Yeah. He shoots that guy who tries to stop him dancing with that girl. Yeah, he does his aggressive dancing with the girl. Mm. Max and Jim are like, okay, let's just wait this out. As soon as he shoots the speakers, like, are you fucking kidding me? Go! And literally, yeah. Max literally yells, No! <laughs> This is Jim is getting... So, Jim's poor old Jim is in the vent and he gets caught. And whatever his name is, Jason Patrick, whatever his name, we never see him again. I don't think. No. He repeatedly, repeatedly shoots into this vent and kills Jim, seemingly. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're in 50 Cent territory now. Because, spoiler alert, he survives. Um... <laughs> And that's when good old Max says, No! <laughs> he goes full, he's fuming. <laughs> he goes full John Wick on these bad guys. This is before any werewolf shenanigans. This, he goes full John Wick on them and shoots all of them. In slow motion. In slow motion. The first of many shots of people running and jumping, diving, <laughs> while shooting. Uh, that must have been in some sort of film Honestly, around that this is ahead of its time. This is before The this Matrix. The Matrix. It's, you know, it's before Blade. Yeah. It's before Bad Boys. You know, this this film invented slow motion shootouts and action scenes. <laughs> so, so all the bad guys are now dead, and the hostages are just running around aimlessly, like they're in a piranha film. I'm just like, <laughs> just like going from one side to the other, like just keep running. You're not going anywhere, but just keep running and screaming. We then cut poor old Jim on the ventilator, and I'm like, how the fuck did he survive that? I mean, he must have had at least fifteen bullets. Yeah, like, blah, 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 blah. you know. <laughs> Oh, fucking hell. Um, he's with his fiance, who I didn't realise at this point, I swear they play my TV with people, is Jennifer Rubin from Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Yes. Um, 
Bless her heart. She yeah. does absolutely fuck all in this she's film. She's beautiful and bad, but she doesn't do she's much. She's beautiful and bad. And at least half of Jim's age, <laughs> which is really weird. <laughs> um, so then we cut... So Max comforts Jim's fiancé. Um, don't really go anywhere. Max is then at couples counselling. <laughs> Max's wife... And she's a bit of a twat, actually. Let's, let's, be, let's be honest here. She's not... She didn't sign up for war duty, okay? She didn't. So Max's wife <laughs> wants him to get a job that she doesn't have to hear about all the time. <laughs> she didn't sign up for war duty. <laughs> They've been together for three years, though. So I'm like, well, what was she expecting? She knew he was a part. It's true. He hasn't done his full training and got to police officer within three years. No. She knew what she was in for. Mm-hmm. And I just, I think she's a bit of an arsehole. Uh, Max's biggest problem at that point is that his, he's upset that his partner and friend is dying. Um, to which the counsellor, she don't give two oh, fucking no. shit. Oh, she's just there to chain smoke the room oh down. My oh my god. She's chain smoking. <laughs> and she's like, we all lose people, Max. But this, literally <laughs> have, this must have happened like the day before. It's like Vanessa Hudgens, ain't she? <laughs> yeah, people some people are going to die. die. Yeah. <laughs> But she is chain smoking at an alarming rate. <laughs> She's so into smoking right now. She's definitely Vanessa Hitchens. <laughs> but the scene just ends. It's like, why is this here? Yeah. But so it's just Max's wife having a right old moan. It's all she does throughout the whole film. She's not a likeable character. Poor Max. You know, she she knew what she was signing up yeah. for. And what he can't go home and talk about his work. <laughs> Fucking hell. Sure, well, she did soon. We then see an unknown figure injecting Jim with a piss-coloured substance. <laughs> the nurse calls the figure officer. Uh-huh. So we're like, ooh, intriguing. Um, absolutely, um, throughout the whole of my notes, I've got this substance, the serum, <coughs> down as piss. It looks like piss. <laughs> it looks like piss when you're dehydrated. <laughs> it really does. Uh, there's no other thing for it. Um, then we get Jim surprising Max in the locker room <laughs> after making a miraculous recovery. And, and how does he refer to Max? Hey, Maxi Pad. Maxi Pad. <laughs> oh, what a manly nickname. Oh. But because we... I, I suppose I hadn't seen a clear image of Jim. I didn't know who this was to begin with. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh no, we're getting a bully angle, like a racism <laughs> angle or something. But apparently Maxi Pad is a term of endearment. Yeah, uh, well, Max, like many points in this film, uh, is, is very confused. Um, he didn't really do anything. No, that. <laughs> they go to get donuts and uh, obviously we know Jim is diabetic, um, so something's not right. But this confuses Max so much to the point he puts on his sunglasses to show us how confused he is. <laughs> well, I was confused as well. Because Jim is absolutely fuming at the donut shop owner. Because he's given Jim a diet donut. And they refer to it as a diet donut. What the do- fuck is a diet donut? Bitch, what is a diet donut? Get and, why me have, some. and why have I not got them in my cupboard right now? <laughs> if they exist... But apparently it's a sugar-free donut. For, well, probably tastes like cardboard. Um, but it's absolutely fuming. <laughs> and Max doesn't really... I mean, he puts his sunglasses on. That's just to show how confused he is. Yeah, but he doesn't go... Donut? <laughs> Diabetic? <laughs> well, before he can think about it, in a bizarre series of events, um, because there's always a bit of crime going on, even by the donut shop, uh, we get a random drive-by shooting... So Max does a classic <laughs> ju- <laughs> he does a classic jump and shoot move to stop them, but they get away. Another random crime that's not really <laughs> explained. So it's like, well, why were there hostages at the club? Like, what, yeah. what was going on there? This one guy gets shot in the back, but then these people continue to <laughs> shoot other people, and they shoot the sharp, and people, you know, fly in the air like, oh... So it's never really explained why this crime is occurring right next to them. Yeah, Los Angeles is one big bizarre series of events in this film. I mean, it's never... There's never one specific big bad either. There's never one specific villain. Well, um, it's... it's that, what's his name, isn't it? That's apparently the big drug dealer. 
Yeah, but even he barely gets any fucking screen he time. He doesn't get it's, any screen it's, time. It doesn't feel like there is one main villain because everyone gets such a short amount of screen time if they're a villain. Um, and then the, the one guy who's very obviously a villain doesn't get called out on it until the third act. So it's, it's very, yeah, it is very confusing. But then also there's a villain, and we'll get into it later, but another villain, uh, a villain, mm. uh, the villain, really... And he's kind of justified in kind of what he was but that's, doing. But that's who I'm on about. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to him. Um, so the random drive-by occurs. Yeah. Jim then goes into superhuman... T- this isn't even... This is ain't, isn't even John Wick. This is like Superman flying through the air mode. Isn't yeah. He? All whilst Max is standing there looking like Kirk Cameron's sister. Yeah. Um, just like... Just constant confusion on his face. So he's practically <laughs> flying through the air, chasing <laughs> after this car with the drive-by shooting. Um, I've got here this film absolutely loves shots of gunfire whilst diving <laughs> forward. It happens again. Jim does it himself. Jim then catches up with the last perpetrator, who is sporting, and I kid you not, the most hideous short dreads wig <laughs> I have ever seen in a film. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> In it, and it's very clearly a wig, yeah. and it's it's looks so cheap. It it absolutely looks like something you'd get from a costume shop. <laughs> like, is it really like was that really integral <laughs> to the character that you had to have short dress? <laughs> you know, it's just yeah, um, really, and it, covering his face, you can't see any. It just looks absolutely ridiculous. Um, Jim gets shot twice in the stomach, mm-hmm. but just laughs it off. He then, in a bizarre series of events, <laughs> takes hold of the steering of the bike and crashes it fully into a wall. <laughs> Big explosion. Obviously a massive explosion. Massive explosion, to which Jim appears from the explosion completely unscathed. Yeah. But not even, like, I mean, it would burn his clothes off. No. I mean, if he's invincible, okay, if if he's invincible, which is what we've gathered now, he's got these super superpowers, powers or whatever, and he's invincible. If you're an explosion, I mean, you're going to lose your clothes. I mean, I didn't want to see it, let's be honest, no offence to you, hun. Um, I didn't want to see it, but it is a bit weird to, <laughs> like... <laughs> not even like burning a little. He hadn't put, have to, didn't have to put any flames out or anything. He just appears. Oh, what makes perfectly me perfectly fine. He puts on this big display. You know, he walks away from a fire without a single mark on him. Um, you know, he's he's flying through the air. Uh, he also survived death from being shot in that vent. And in the next scene, they're giving out awards for bravery at Club Zero, and fucking Max gets an award, <laughs> yeah. and no one even says Jim's name. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Oh, he could go fuck himself. He nearly died, so he ain't getting shit. That is so true. And then Max is like, I don't even want this fucking medal, and gives it away. He does. <laughs> it is. It is funny <laughs> that Max gets the uh, medal when Jim actually is the <laughs> one that was shot and, like, survived. <laughs> I, I genuinely... I mean, Max is so miserable all the time. And we know he doesn't like his job. We know he doesn't like his wife. But fucking hell, he is always so miserable. But he loves his job. But, well, he didn't during this fucking scene. No, no, not during this scene. I don't... He's... He, I don't know. I mean, he's just so weirded out by this new gym that he... Uh... That he can't stop looking like Kirk Cameron's sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who doesn't... Who is not familiar with that, then you, you haven't listened to our Saving Christmas episode. Please listen to our Saving Christmas episode, because we went through how to record it. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> um... So yeah, he uh, after after this, his wife leaves him a voice message uh, to tell him that she's broke up with him. Yeah, she's pissing off somewhere, isn't she? She's yeah. enough. She can't take it anymore. Whilst Jim is mounting down his lucky coin with a blowtorch. Oh, I wonder what that's for. Um, realizing that Max is experiencing problems, Adam Garu, a high-ranking officer, distinguished by his success in reducing crime in other big cities. Invites Max to join him at his apartment for a weekly meeting with other police officers who are experiencing difficulties. Yeah, so they have a 
awkward conversation in the office, don't they? Mm-hmm. And he invites him to his house. Yeah, he, uh, Adam advises that Max is such a good detective that he should just try and solve his problems rather than quitting. Uh, Max is like, oh, I don't know about this. Um, you know, I'm already attending counselling with the wife and she's left me. Um, Adam, when Max leaves, Adam puts some earplugs in, holds his legs to his chest and starts making wolf noises. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I forgot that. He does do that. Max is playing pool at a bar uh, when Jim shows up. He's having a bit of a bitch about it, Jim. He is, yeah. <laughs> and he just walks in. It's like, <laughs> and now, <laughs> back to this bitch, you had a lot to say about you was playing pool. Max, what's good? Um, he shows up and he, he tells me he's not marrying Helen anymore. She's, oh. she's too beautiful and too bad for him. Uh, he also thanks Max for everything, says he's retiring. <laughs> he watched Bad Dreams, that's why. <laughs> He says he's retired and then shoots himself in the head, which causes Max to say, Jim! <laughs> in the most dramatic way possible. So he ends up shooting himself in the head and actually dies this time. No one really gives a shit. Because he's in the middle of a bar, everyone's like, oh my god. Yes. Like, there's uh, like one <laughs> scream. <laughs> Uh, Max comforts Jim's fiance yet again after after he stares dramatically on the beach for a bit. Yeah, and then we oh god yeah he does that. Uh, <laughs> he listen to a dad music video thing. Uh, this is when we finally realised it was Jennifer Rubin, didn't we? Yeah, she must have had a haircut between scenes. Oh, yeah, well, I grew her hair. Uh, anyway, Max goes to visit Adam at his home. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. No, he, he, ex- he he explores Jim's house first because she's like. Oh yeah, you basically will have whatever the fuck you want of of Jim. Oh, what's he well, he finds now. Take in mind that <laughs> Max doesn't say the word werewolf until the final ten minutes of this film. He looks at Jim's desk, and there are big fucking claw marks on there with blood at the bottom of it. Oh, as well as like all this research on on fucking werewolves and shit. Do you want to hear a secret? What? I have absolutely no idea. Uh, you must have been. I must notes. have missed that. But he literally looks at all this clear evidence that he was a fucking werewolf. It's like, hmm, strange. And that's it. But yeah, then he goes to the meeting. Where he's introduced to Adam's colleagues, Casey Spencer, played by uh, Patsy Kensett, who introduces herself by saying, Hi, Max. Welcome to the class. Casey Spencer. <laughs> her American, yeah, her American accent is fucking atrocious. It's atrocious. But everyone, I, f- I feel like everyone was dubbed as well in this, which <laughs> makes it even more awkward. Doug Crane is also there as well as Liza and Raymond Perez. Oh, uh, okay. I, d- I didn't get any of their names. Did they even say their names? Yes, they all introduced themselves. Full names. Apart from Liza. Yeah. She doesn't get a surname. Oh. Uh, everyone, everyone who Max meets at the meeting praises the impact that Adam's influence has had on their fortunes. <laughs> Casey says, We've all suffered on the line of duty, Max. You aren't alone. Oh, yeah, because Liza was stabbed in the back by a prostitute. Well, she tried to stab a pimp from just... slapping up his oar, apparently. Yes. I, I put it much nicer. <laughs> um, so, Adam goes to talk to Doug outside. And Casey promises to look after Max. Um, Casey doesn't like being ignored. No. <laughs> I don't think she was even talking. So like, I don't like being ignored. <laughs> um, Max insinuates that Adam and Doug are a couple to much hilarity. Uh, and what what were Adam and Doug talking about? Just chatting shit. Well, um, Doug is uh, says he can't go out tonight because his mother's sick. So Adam touches Doug's face and licks his finger, and he's like, "You're lying." Um, some I, I don't know how that that works. That's a werewolf skill that I didn't know about. Well, Doug reveals that he's just worried about what happened to Jim, but Adam convinces him it won't happen to him. Oh yeah, because Jim was on over medication as well. They sent him do lally. Yeah, around the same but, scene. But Jim also. But when did Jim find out that he was a werewolf, so that he would shoot himself with a silver bullet? It all seemed to happen within, like, a day. Yeah, I mean, he was very happy about it when he was walking away from fire. And then he decided he weren't happy about it and shot himself. 
Yeah. Um, before this, Adam gives like but they blamed it on the me- other medication he was on. Yeah, but why was it like that from the beginning? Oh whatever, <laughs> I don't know. I fucking know. Adam Adam gives one big bad guy monologue, making it so obvious that there's something dodgy about him, which makes Max realize that the activities of the group uh, entail embarking on vigilante missions to clean the streets of criminals. Um, I mean. Yeah, no, seriously, it's it's obvious straight away Adam's clearly a bad guy. Technically, they are all police officers, and therefore it's not vigilante. I know, yeah. Like, they've been they, they've been given this task. Mm-hmm. Um, to do, so they're not vigilante. They're not going against the law because the law has asked them to do this. This is where I'm confused with the morals. <laughs> the morals of the piece. Um, because... I mean, are they not doing a good thing, fighting crime? Well, yeah, I mean, I suppose. <laughs> you know, I mean, the yeah, bad guys are taking bad down. Bad guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll get onto that even more further <laughs> down the line. Um, yeah, so the, the group dress themselves up in tacky-looking staff suits. Oh my god! So all black, um, leggings and top. And then, like, a black Magneto helmet. <laughs> um, they inject themselves with the piss solution. Yeah. And even though it's not actually that dark, we keep getting shots in... Um, oh, my God, what's it called? Night vision. Yeah. Don't we? But, like, not really exciting shots in night vision. Well... Yeah, I mean, it's it's Max watching with, with the night vision goggles. Um, it's still quite light. He could have just used normal binoculars. After they inject the piss chemical, Adam and his team become more powerful and uh, can't get injured, weirdly enough. They also make wolf noises. Uh, Max Ooh. watches them fighting some more stereotypical-looking bad guys. Some of them even have fucking ponytails. Yes. Um, so what what it is... A little is George it, Michael beard. Is it a... Um... Like an, a weapons auction. I don't even know what fucking set. is anymore. They're selling weapons, essentially. But Max is literally watching them. Yeah. Uh, making wolf noises and tearing down all these people. He's like, hmm, that's a bit odd. <laughs> like, no, no, seriously, how the fuck have you not clicked on already? <laughs> well, he tries to grass them up. Yeah. But it's to his senior officer, who we find out is the one that's asked them to do all this anyway. So it's kind of like poo poo, doesn't it? Like, yeah, you know. But he's like, oh, my business. They're like beasts. Maybe I should write up a report about them. Yeah, <laughs> beasts. Dang. Um, yeah. So then Raymond, in in a bizarre series of events, Raymond attempts to get married, uh, and decides against it. After this, he starts running at his wedding guests and like, I don't want to get married! Oh, fuck off! I don't want to get married! Fuck you! And then everyone's like, oh, oh, how strange. Like, so, no, there's something dodgy going on here. Max is at the wedding. He literally met him the day before. Yeah. He, he leaves him at the altar. Uh, leaves his wife at the yeah. altar. And then Casey turns to Max, and yeah, he only met him the day before. Um, Casey turns to Max and says, it's for the best. (laughs) Okay. But what's this going to do with anything? (laughs) But then they're trying to get Max involved, and Max is already married. Yeah. So what's he going to leave his wife? Well, she's already left him. She's already left him anyway. Well, Casey takes Max to the zoo. Um, She's like, oh, I've just seen a failed wedding. Where should we go? Let's go to the zoo. Um, And... He tells her how he's been doing research on it, but can't find anything. So he says, want to tell me what's going on? And she says, justice. (laughs) Well, they're doing this while sat in front of a caged wolf. (laughs) And then she kisses him and a roaring noise plays. (laughs) Well, I mean, you say kiss, you're, you're oversimplifying it there. She licks his lips and then his teeth. Ew. I mean, that's that's more than just a standard kiss. Uh, Casey also provides Is her... She? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> How many um, notes were you writing? I think I must have... Uh, excuse me, my notes are perfectly fine, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think I must have blocked that one. Um, yeah, so Casey provides her backstory as well. Uh, she was part of a home invasion where her husband was killed and it made her feel like less of a woman until she met Adam and then he made her part of the pack. 
Yeah, well, made her not less of a woman, but um, hates being a woman. Yeah. Because being a woman made her weak and not able to physically help. And that's why her husband got killed. So that's a nice message for everyone. <laughs> um, oh, dear. I've got an... an okay, maybe my notes are a little off. Because I do have some in <laughs> Something happens that I can't remember. I was struggling to catch up at some points. Is this when he goes to the pathologist? Yeah, he, yes. he demands to see Jim's body at the morgue um, and finds a silver bullet in his head made of Jim's lucky coin. And he's still, like, suspicious. No, no, no Max, seriously, they're fucking werewolves. Suspicious. Seriously. Like, how are you... Like, it's so calm about this. You are, These are werewolves. Because yeah, his lucky coin is silver. Lucky <laughs> yeah. silver coin. So... Can I just get something straight? Max tried to grasp them up. Yeah. Even though what they've been doing is legal. They're not vigilantes because the police have asked them to do this. Mm -hmm. He has, in fact, gone against the law Mm -hmm. by making this pathologist take out this bullet mm-hmm. prematurely yeah. and unofficially yeah mm-hmm. so just so we get that straight maybe max is the bad guy <laughs> max is a fucking moron he's an absolute idiot i mean i felt sorry for him because of how idiotic he was like he has no clue what he's doing this entire film it's tr- that is very true actually <laughs> <laughs> he just turns up, says a few things that you expect cops to say, and then does some fucking jumps. That's that's all he does. So he goes to see Casey and asks mm. what Adam did to Jim. So he knows what he's doing. Wow. Casey explains that Adam is a scientist. He's, he's something of a scientist himself. Uh, who created their werewolf chemical before launching into a speech about why the chemical is good. She's a bit upset. She She's really trying to sell this product. I mean, there's never seen coming up where she's like, so if you take this chemical, oh my God, this chemical's great. You get loads of benefits from it. And she she is absolutely, she's going to stop you in the middle of the street. Like, can I interest you in this new piss chemical? Oh God, she's like one of those, is Avon calling? <laughs> Casey reveal, uh, reveals a dose of the chemical strapped to her leg seductively. Oh yeah. And offers it to Max before getting it on with him. They do it doggy style, obviously. They obviously do it doggy <laughs> style. Um, so she loses her top, and so we see her back. She didn't lose her skirt at any point, and he doesn't actually lose his trousers. No. <laughs> so, um, who knows? <laughs> uh, he must have zip burn. Um, p- 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 yeah, potentially. Oh, let's not get into that conversation again. <laughs> Casey starts transforming into a werewolf whilst they're having sex. And somehow, because he's a fucking idiot, Max doesn't notice. No. Like, he's going around blind his entire film. He has no idea what's going on. Like, her back starts, you know, changing shape and she gets fangs and he's oblivious to the whole thing. He's like, oh, maybe maybe it's what happens. She (laughs) must be a fucking great shag. (laughs) If he's completely (laughs) oblivious to that. Uh, They have a post-sex conversation where Max tells her about all the codes they just broke. And she tells him about her animal magnetism. Again, if anyone needs grassing up, it's him. (laughs) And yes, she has pure animal magnetism. And then she tries to convince him to take the piss chemical again. Again. (laughs) But he's like, I just say no. Just like the kids from Grange Hill. Just say no. Just say no. Just... (laughs) Max, att- no. <laughs> Max attempts to leave when Casey dramatically says, Max, I'm sorry, and shoots him, and in- then injects him with the piss chemical, which heals him. And she says, now do you understand? Let's go for a ride. <laughs> yeah. Well, he doesn't understand anything at any point no. in this film, so I don't think this is going to help. They go for a drive, and Casey's there like, yeah, so you take this injection, become a werewolf, uh, you know, you go around fighting crime. And he's still like, I wonder what's going on here. Like, she's fucking explaining that she's a fucking <laughs> werewolf. <laughs> they go for a drive, and Casey explains what the serum does, which is pretty much what we knew anyway. I mean, as an audience, we knew all this. Like, we've put two and two together and got four. 
Mario's put one and a half and... Mario? Mario, that's the <laughs> name of the actor. What's his name? Max. Max, Max has, you know, put 0.5 and <laughs> 0.6 together and got three. But this is my, my favourite scene, Connor, because... To that, again, let me just remind you, he doesn't say the word werewolf until the final ten minutes. He doesn't guess that they are all werewolves until the final ten minutes. They show up for a vigilante mission, uh, vigilante, I'd say loosely, mm. and a nearby kid doesn't think they'll come out alive. They take it's two... The 90s version of that spooky house. Yeah. <laughs> they take two more werewolf injections. Casey fucking rips off the metal from the bad guy's door, which is an amazing visual, by the way, seeing Patsy Kensett <laughs> ripping off metal from a door. Max starts having claws coming out of his hand, like fucking yeah. Wolverine. I, why they're coming out of his knuckles, I don't know, and not his fingernails. But he is transforming into a fucking werewolf. And he still has no idea what's going on. He is... He's become a fucking werewolf. Yeah. And he still hasn't clicked on. <laughs> and the writing for Max is so insulting. And they break in and it's a, it's a meth lab. Uh, and a shootout starts. So an actual crime we can identify <laughs> and with reasoning. Yeah. So it's a meth lab so they can create drugs and sell them. Which is the most explanation any of the criminals <laughs> get in this film. Yeah, and you get to meet their boss as well. So this this one's a special crime. I know. Um, they slice their way through the bad guys. Lots of great gore um, from this scene. And the surviving bad guys tell their boss about Adam's people tearing up the lad. The lad? <laughs> when they tear up the lads. Excuse they they, they did tear up the lads. Tearing up the lad? What have you been Patsy watching? and Max, they're tearing up those lads. Um, <laughs> totally now. And the boss wants them dealt with. So... Max's boss has a word of Adam um, about some His rumors. Teague, isn't is it? it? Teague. Oh no, Teague is the drug lord boss. Oh, okay, no, uh, Max's boss, the one. Uh... Oh, I don't know his name. Yeah, no, I don't, he, think, I don't he think he's given one. a name. So he tells Adam he's he's heard some rumors like Banana Rama, and uh, Adam is fuming with Casey because she fucked Max. I don't give a shit if you shot him. I didn't tell you to fuck him. You're only <laughs> supposed to fuck me. Well, it starts it with, someone's been bad. <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely fuming. So, uh, Casey reveals that she likes Max. And Adam gives her a big werewolf slap for that. Um, so, Adam starts to transform into a werewolf. Rips open Casey's top. Yeah, with the cheapest looking werewolf <laughs> claw. Uh, and yeah, they get it on. Well, he forces her, really, to have sex with him. I mean, it starts off like that, and by the time the scene ends, I don't know, I feel like it's implied otherwise. Yeah, I, I think they were a couple anyway. I, I do think, I think she was just a little reluctant to begin with, because, well, obviously she just had a slap, hasn't she? But she's against Adam now, yeah. with the rest of the film. Max's colleagues um, throw him a surprise party. <laughs> Is it his birthday? Yes. Um, well, it was his birthday, throw him a surprise party... And I thought this was a dream sequence because his boss brings him his silver medal um, that he gave away. And he's like, here, you can have this back now. And then it starts burning him. So I thought, oh, okay, it's a dream sequence. No, no, this, is, this, this weird-ass scene is, is a real scene in the film. So he rushes to the gents' <laughs> toilet, like, straight away. The moment he gets there, pin, he runs off. So everyone's staring at the gents. Everyone thinks he's got the shits. Yeah, so his wife follows him in case it's Code Brown emergency. <laughs> So she goes into the toilet and, um, because she's back, she's back now. Yeah, she's, um, all of a sudden. Apparently th they thought it was best if she was there for the party. It was a bit awkward considering she just left it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's strange yeah. that she thought, you know, surprise, birthday, surprise, your wife is back. You know, two surprises, <laughs> might have a heart attack. So she tells him he looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> although, no... Makeup is on Mario the actor. No. To make him look like shit. And he looks the same, she, really. She, she literally just walks in, oh, you look like shit, and then they start having a snog. Yeah. So she, um, she tells him that she's there for him now. She's seemingly had a change of heart. <laughs> which she hasn't, because she moans for the rest of the film as well. 
And he does try to force himself on her. Mm. And uh, he, like, rushes out, doesn't he? Uh-huh. When he kind of realises what he's doing. Um, Adam and the gang turn up. Well, the pathologist tells him there's something in Jim's blood first. But he didn't He didn't finish that no, sentence, No, no, he's he? interrupted. Yeah. Um, does he ever finish it? No. We, do we ever know what's in Jim's no, blood? No, um, no, no idea. Complete waste of time, then. Um, yeah, we get a big, dramatic, slow-motion walkthrough from Adam and the gang. Uh, Anna looks at us like, Oh, she gets shivers just from watching her walk through the fucking door. Anna like, being Max's wife. Yeah, she yeah. has no idea who these people are. And she's like, oh, hell fucking odd, don't they? Never met them. Like, she knows Adam's a villain from the first time she looks at him. But whilst Max is still there, like, I don't know. I think she should have been the detective, <laughs> that's why. Um, Max dramatically opens his presence without looking at the presence, just watching Casey. <laughs> Adam escorts Max away from the party and tells him he has a special present for him. And everyone at that party is shook. They cannot believe it. How can you do this? Um, so they're all dressed up in black again. <laughs> they get into their van, don't they? Yeah. But um, the van explodes straight yeah. away. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's Teague's men who have set them up. Yeah. Um, they then appear in werewolf form when i say werewolf form there's only one true werewolf in this film yeah so when i say werewolf form i mean they've got a bit of the lost face, boys vampires lost <laughs> boys vampire makeup on um so that's their that's as werewolfy as they get so they appear and uh, they we then cut to helicopter dropping teague's men mm-hmm. right into teague's living room yeah. Through his, uh, let's say, sunroof. Uh, what, what glass would you call roof. It? Glass, glass roof. roof. With, with a note saying, Your move, LAPD. Yeah. So the, I've, I've decided to call them the Wolf Pack at this point. <laughs> so the Wolf Pack enter the police station and request a new van. Uh, the chief wants to see them, but Max goes to see a prisoner who has been ranting about Adam. So he's been ranting about Adam. And it's chosen that Max, just randomly, <laughs> Max is the one to go and see him. Yeah, this is fucking ridiculous. This entire scene is fucking ridiculous. Uh, this guy is in there. He's had. He's got the vampire makeup on um, for werewolves. And uh, he's like, get out while she can, bro. Bro? As soon as, soon as Adam, as soon as Max walks in. Um the ex is is supposedly the form because of uh, because of Adam. He's a cop from Miami. Yeah, he, he's overacting. He, he really something is something proper, isn't he? he? He warns Max that after the streets are cleaned of crime, all of the officers who work with Adam are getting killed straight away. But because someone needed to tell Max this, this one random detective, Tom Davis, managed to get away. Well, yeah, he also describes himself as deformed and unemployable. Yeah. Because the way he's been left. Now, it's said that the others have been killed. And uh-huh. that's a big point. And that's a big... Really, the only way that makes Adam a true villain mm-hmm. in the film is that the people he's doing this to, he eventually kills. Yeah. Now, number one, I don't know why he kills them. It's no. never explained. No, I mean, it could be quite useful to him. <laughs> exactly. He has to go and employ new people every fucking time. Exactly. And then, number two, why does he keep moving from city to city anyway? Or, like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know? Like, why isn't he just stuck in one place yeah. and have them out? Or, you know, just left them to and gone to somewhere mm-hmm. else to create a task force yeah. and left those ones to... I, d- I really don't get it. No. Um, yeah, so he says that the deformity was caused by overuse of the piss chemical. Uh, and then Adam walks in and this guy's like, motherfucker! <laughs> and then Adam shoots the guy. Does. <laughs> and, and yet, Max is still like, I think there's something a bit odd about Adam. Like, he's just fucking killed yeah. someone! <laughs> for no reason! So he goes to do research on him. That wasn't enough research. He goes to do some research, looking through old newspaper articles about mysterious stuff related to Adam, one of which has premature explosion underneath his picture. So I don't know what that was about. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's about Adam, and then it's also about lunar eclipses. Yes. Yeah. But it's never... We just get in these shots of newspaper clippings, and it's never really mentioned no. the link lunar eclipses and Adam mm -hmm. or what Max has gathered from any of this. Yeah. Um, it's just him looking at newspaper articles. Yes. But we do see that he um, looks at that day's paper mm -hmm. and what's happening that evening. The lunar eclipse. The lunar eclipse. And what a lovely coincidence. So Max, um, again, you know, it's took him this fucking long to realise that he's even a bad guy. Goes to Adam's place where Adam is casually extracting the chemical from his own brain with a syringe. And then, like, I mean, first of all, he says, this is my brain. This is you on my brain. Any questions? And finally... That's a joke. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, aware, I'm aware. So this is, this is you on drugs. Yeah. This is your brain on drugs. So after all of this, with 10 minutes left of the film, Max says... You're a motherfucking werewolf. Really? <laughs> well fucking done. Well done. It took you an hour and fucking 20 minutes to realise. Yeah. that You turned into a fucking werewolf. And you still didn't realise what was going on. All this time. You fought with a bunch of werewolves. <laughs> All this time. And he, he finally realises. Just because he saw him... Taking out some stuff from his brain and putting it in the syringe. Yeah. So then Adam... Anyway, actually, just thinking about it, we never see this tea guy again, do we? No, we, we don't. No, it's a completely weird subplot there. Um, so then Adam explains his evil plan to use his werewolf <laughs> abilities to... Uh, he's moved to the America. Yeah, he gives us a big backstory. He's got, he's got an American accent, a full American accent. There's no... <laughs> twinge of another accent no. it's full american accent but he explains his evil plan to use his werewolf abilities to help the greatest country on earth america by cleaning up its streets he also wants max to take his place when his time is ended mm -hmm. and i've put it yes that max the most skeptical <laughs> skeptic, ugh, skeptical person he's met through the whole film, yeah. Max has been sceptical. He has not believed them. He's been completely against it, apart from randomly joining them at one point after his birthday mm -hmm. party. Like, it was, it, this is all perfectly fine now. Yeah. Um, but he's always been, you know, questioning them, very reluctant. I mean, he had to be murdered so that they could inject it into him. Yeah. But he's the one that Adam has chosen uh -huh. out of all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a stupid decision. And if he had just watched Max at any point throughout the film, he'd have known it was a stupid decision. Exactly. Uh, he explains that he doesn't need a full moon to change. Uh, he then bites Doug and kills him. Poor Doug. Uh, Max tells him that he did all his research on him, which made him realise that he's always the only survivor after all of his jobs. No shit. He's just killed one of his fucking men in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Max and Casey punch Raymond and Liza before jumping out of the window. Yeah. Who told Max <laughs> that Casey was on his side? I know. So... Casey <laughs> did this to him. Yeah. And they're now, what, the ones escaping yeah. together? Like, what changed? This is what I didn't understand. Like, what changed... That Max was like, oh, Casey's definitely going to be on my side. Because that... I, I, I believe that Adam sexually assaulted her. Mm. And therefore, she's obviously not on Adam's side anymore. Max doesn't know that. They haven't interacted no. since then. It's... She just said my favourite line of dialogue, though. She's like, quick, let's go to the beach. They can't send us there. Wait, what? Since when has that been part of where? Oh, I know, yeah. Like, they can't send, send can't, people on the beach? Can't smell over the uh, sea Are salt. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> well, they throw out, they jump out the window. Max lands in the street. And Casey lands in Friday the 13th Part 4 fashion. Right on top of the car. Doesn't she? Yeah. Um... She, they get to the beach, 
And big she, dramatic send off. Big dramatic send off. Poor Casey, rest in peace. <laughs> Hardly knew thee. Um, she explains that she hasn't been taking her piss serum, and that hurt a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so she's like, take the chemical, in. stop Guru, and then dies. Yes. Oscar worthy finale for her. In the waves as well as in the waves. In the waves, being held. She's got heels on still. Yeah. Um, Max's boss approaches Adam to tell him it's all over, but Adam shoots him uh, and flies away with Raymond and Liza uh, in the helicopter. Yeah. Max tries shooting the helicopter because he's a fucking idiot. Um, Max then asks the pathologist to make him a bunch of silver stuff, and the pathologist's like, yeah, sure. Like, without any questions whatsoever. Yeah, he's like, yeah, dude. Even though um, him and Max didn't actually get on that well. No. But apparently they're the best friends. Um, Adam and the gang are killing a bunch of people. Max shows up. And uh, the guy they're killing is like, tell this animal to let me go. So Max is like, let that motherfucker go. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's killing a criminal, though. It's like, who's the bad guy here? Um... It, now it's vigilante. Yeah, so so Max holds a gun to, to Adam and he's like, a silver bullet, shoot me if you dare, go ahead, make your day. Um, so Max shoots him and, and I genuinely thought he was dead. I thought that's it. Okay, that's just the end of the film. But no, Adam gets back up and is like, ouch, didn't you get my memo? A full eclipse protects me from everything, including silver. And then we get a shot of what is the cheapest looking eclipse I've ever fucking oh, seen. Oh, I know. Like, what a coincidence as well. Because, spoiler alert, the lunar eclipse doesn't actually last that long in no. this film. Literally lasts less than a minute. And it caused him to transform into what is more of a bear than a werewolf. It was giving me grizzly. Yeah, it genuinely looked like a bear mixed with um, Company of Wolves. Okay, you give it a bit too much credit, though. That's I said probably... mixed. I said mixed. <laughs> this is, it's probably one of the weaker effects. Well, the transformation is one of the weaker effects in the film. It looks so stupid. It's I... not fully costumey, but it's getting... It's really getting to costume. He he kills yeah. off the rest of his gang, doesn't he? Yeah, he he does for some reason. Liza tries to stop him for some reason, never explained. Like, she was fully on board until the point he became a werewolf, even though she must have known he was going to become a werewolf or whatever. Yeah. Who, who fuck cares? The eclipse starts to disappear, so Max stabs Adam with something that makes him look like shit. Yeah. Um, after a bit of a scrap. And uh, Adam thanks Max and tells him to lie down in his blood, take his power... And protect the innocent. Yeah, so literally the lunar eclipse lasts, what, like two minutes. <laughs> literally two minutes. So it's only these two minutes that happened to occur when Max shot him with a silver yeah. bullet. Like so many coincidences. But apparently falling from a great height kills him off. Yeah. Well, he stabs him with something. I don't know what he stabs him with. He stab it. Must he have been does. silver something. Um, mm. But it, it just makes him look like shit, and then he dies. Yeah, it does. Um, Max touches some of Adam's blood and looks at it, and then we're taken to Denver three years later. Yes, Denver three years later. And Max's wife is still moaning. She is. Now I couldn't figure out that this time is she moaning about having to move again, or have they just moved? I think they've just moved. She's he was like, oh, because he's like, oh hi honey, I'm home. Oh, yeah, good day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I arrested someone. Great for you. Good for you. Oh, you're such a good cop. Good, you're such a good cop. Um, she accidentally cuts her finger whilst cutting up some steak. So Max gives it a lick, and they have a smile at each other. He goes to his office. <laughs> That's so weird. I'd never do that. <laughs> no, I mean they're werewolves. Um, yeah. Spoiler alert. She's not a werewolf. She... Did you miss the last frame of the film? What? So he goes to his office to research how long it is until the next eclipse on In Denver. Computer. Yeah, nine days. Whilst Anna's finger heals itself. Yeah, but werewolves can do that, can't they? So she's a werewolf, that's what I just said. No, he, his lick healed her. No, it healed itself. No, his lick healed 
her. I don't know. I think she's a werewolf. Mm. Fan theories. Give us your fan theories. We'll never find yeah. out. Um, so that's full of clips. That ambiguous ending. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> full of clips for the um, sequel. Long awaited sequel. Can't wait. Um, yeah, no, I. Do you know what? We've bitched about it for the last hour, but I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I was alright. It's cheesy B movie silliness. Yeah. Um, there's nothing in it to hate too much. If you like your 90s cop films with loads of stereotypes, slow motion action, oh, just melodrama, great line delivery, then, I mean, great, I'm using that loosely. Um, and werewolves, then, and a bear, yeah. then, you know, it's everything you could want. Yeah, and if getting hold of it costs you anything under three quid, then it's worth it. It's, it's on YouTube as well. So. Yeah, it is on YouTube. It's a TV free. film. So, I'm sure yeah, Patsy Kens is not making too much money from TV it. TV movie, yeah. <laughs> but yes, that is Full Eclipse. Uh, I, I just, as we know already, many of you are fans of Full Eclipse, but um, keep telling us about how much you love it. Uh, we're on social media, Horror Court Trash over on Facebook and Instagram. And Horrible Trash on Twitter. I'm dead at Gaz92 on Letterboxd. Gazmo205 on Instagram. And GazCruz92 on Twitter. I am Chris Barker 83 on Instagram, Twitter and Letterboxd. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe on iTunes. And rate, subscribe on Spotify and like, follow and anything else. Next week is a big week for us gays out there. Any horror fan, <laughs> I think. I don't think just the queer ones. Uh, a big a big part of the Scream fan base is, is, is the gays. Um, rightfully well, so. I, yeah, I, I, do you know what? No, excuse me. Anyone with good taste Anyone with good is taste. a fan of Scream. It's, it's a big week. We're getting Very a, big week. The fifth Scream film. So naturally, because as you know, we've already discussed Scream on the podcast, all four films. Naturally, we will be discussing... Final Scream. Yeah. The rip-off from David Dakota. 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 I don't know. We must find week. out. I do apologise. Uh, final please, Stab. Please listening. As, as it may be known in America, Final Stab. I have no idea if we're going to have enough material for an episode. <laughs> I know. Hopefully. Well, fingers crossed. Well, it's going to be before Scream 5 comes out, isn't it? Yeah, so Tuesday, next week. Uh, so we can't even talk a little about Scream 5. No, <laughs> no. Um, but yes. Okay. For a Scream rip-off, we'll, we'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye.